Let's switch gears here and talk about the solar eclipse that's going to cross the U.S. today. And Brittany got to speak with NASA about what to expect. Folks across the country are in for a treat when the moon moves in front of the sun, casting a ring of fire in the sky this weekend. While the Charlotte area will only see a partial view of the eclipse, safety is always top of mind. Here to discuss this weekend's events and what to look forward to is NASA expert Trevor Knuth. Good morning, Trevor. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks for being with us. So this weekend, there will be an annular solar eclipse for folks from Eugene, Oregon to San Antonio, Texas. What can they expect to see? Yeah, so a solar eclipse is whenever the moon comes in between the Earth and the sun, casting its shadow onto the Earth. There are actually two types of solar eclipses. One is a total solar eclipse, which people are probably more familiar with. There's also this rare case of an annular solar eclipse. This is when the moon is a little bit further away from the Earth in that elliptical orbit, making it appear slightly smaller, doesn't completely block the surface of the sun. And instead, we get this ring of fire or annulus effect going on. So what's the difference between that and only a partial eclipse, like what we're going to see here in the Charlotte area? Right, so in a partial eclipse, you won't be able to see sort of the total ring of fire effect, but if you do have eclipse glasses or have an indirect viewing method, such as a pinhole camera, you can still see the moon partially blocking the sun before it's sort of continuing on in its orbit. Yeah, it seems like from the pictures, it looks like they just kind of took a bite out of it. Um, do viewers still need to take those safety precautions though for a partial eclipse? Yes, so no matter what, during an annular solar eclipse, even if you are in that path of totality, you must use eclipse glasses to safely view the sun because the surface of the sun will never be completely blocked. And that is the most dangerous part to actually view directly. So if people don't get a chance this year, there's another big eclipse happening in April of 2024. How is that one going to be different? Right, so first of all, their path will be slightly different. It'll be getting in Texas and going up through the northeast of the United States. Also, it'll be a total solar eclipse, which means that the moon will actually be slightly closer in that orbit and completely block the surface of the sun, allowing us to view the corona, which is that sort of dim, sparse, hot atmosphere that surrounds the sun, which is usually far too dim to see. That's like the one that happened back in 2017, correct? Yes. Yeah. I think a lot of people remember that since it wasn't that long ago. So how are eclipses scientifically valuable to NASA? What we'll be seeing is various rockets going up into the upper atmosphere and into the near-Earth environment, carrying instruments to make measurements of the electron populations and other phenomena and see how these respond to this drop in solar light that we're getting. Very, very cool. Thank you so much for being with us, Trevor. Yes, thank you for having me. Charlotte's partial eclipse is expected to peak around 1.15 p.m. with about 50% of the sun covered. Now will clouds prevent us from being able to see it? Full forecast coming up after the break.